two girls who get an infect one's ear infection and the other respiratory. Mm. No fun. All right, you guys ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right, do it. Ready whenever you are, my friend. Me, 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 and get ready for singing. Me, 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 me. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Get your radio. I'm gonna just give us a little intro here. Okay, so back in the studio once again is Radio Free favorite, Mr. Brian Braddock. Hey, Brian. Hey, man. How are you? Brian is the executive director at House of Hope for the PD, and Brian brought our friend with him today, the one and only. No cash. That's, that's right, y'all. That's K N O W, y'all. That's right. So, no cash. Uh, you may be new to some of our listeners. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, they call me the homie No Cash, the one and only. If there's another, he's a phony. And uh, I fell on hard times about a few years back, about maybe three, five, four, five years ago. Um, I experienced homelessness in a major way. And uh, I'm still homeless to this day. But uh, this guy stepped to me and he said that he wanted to capture some of my talents um, through video and he right. would let me try to build a YouTube platform. I didn't know anything about YouTube because when I left the streets, it was just MySpace. Right. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I agreed. Hannah Montana and MySpace. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? So, you know, I, I agreed to do it, you know, just to give it a shot. And lo and behold, the videos, the three videos that we did took off. Uh, the first video was Homeless Man Sings for a Big Mac inside of McDonald's. The second one was Homeless Man Sings Drake, started from the bottom. And the biggest one was Homeless Man Sings John Legend, All of Me. And um, all of those videos combined now, I think, have over uh, 20 million themselves. And then we started my YouTube channel, and now I have an extra 20-something million. So wow. 40 million views combined and 120,000 subscribers four years later, you know. Nice. And so you're here with Brian today. Uh, to talk about homelessness. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right, like that's you right. Just said. It's an issue that honestly a lot of us would rather not think about. I mean, if, if we're trying to sweep honest. it under the rug. Right, it's confusing, mm -hmm. it's complicated, it's messy. It can certainly be uncomfortable to even think about. But you guys had an idea, uh, a notion that perhaps you could change that a little bit. Well, I reached out to Brian in December trying to, you know, because I saw him in the paper. He had made the paper for doing some things with the homeless. And for the past three years, I've been looking locally trying to find someone who was as passionate about helping the homeless as I was because I didn't have nothing. I'm also going through it, so it was kind of hard for me. But when I saw his name in the paper, I went out and I Googled his name and Google led me to this uh, attorney, this law firm with the same name as his and we laughed it, laughed it off and they gave me his number. So I reached out to him and left him a message. Yeah, because I've been on the other side of the law. I got four felonies. I've, I've never... I've never been an attorney, but I, I played one on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know a lot about law, <laughs> not how to get out of it. So he pointed me in the right direction, and uh, I, I reached out to Brian, and he didn't answer. I left him a message, and instead of Brian pointing me into the right direction to get assistance from the House of Hope or you know, the normal way that he normally helped homeless people, he said because he was reading this book called The Same Kind of Different as Me by Ron Hall, right it kind of inspired him to take me on in a different way. So he invited me out. What a great breakfast. story. What yeah. a great story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I guess, you know, when the heart's ready, then then God will provide that opportunity. And and it was all about perspective. What I wanted to do was with No Cash Beyond, and, and then what we wanted to share with people was a, a genuine perspective of homelessness. Because I've never been homeless, you know, and so... Um, I'd worked in an addictions ministry before. I'm a recovering addict. Okay. And so when I'm counseling, you know, men and women and their families and pastors about addiction, I've been there. You know, I know what it's like to take the, the baby's milk money and, and go buy crack cocaine. And, you know, I know what it's like to, you know, choose yourself over paying rent and losing your house and losing your cars and all that. So I understood all that stuff. Um, but as an executive director of a homeless organization, I had never been homeless on the street. So... Um, you don't have to be homeless to help homeless people, sure, yeah. but to understand, you know, and, and to, and to have to a be, better perception. Yeah, have a, have a, a true perception of what's right. right, you know. Um, so I had talked to several of the people at the shelter, but because of my role as the executive director, 
You know, it's like talking to your preacher. Yeah. You know, you just don't, you, you're not they're transparent. Not you right, yeah. yeah they're not what's, be this guy, what's this guy, what's this guy want to know? What's he want to hear? You know, what's going to be best for me? What do you want to know that for? Right. right, what's going to be best <laughs> for me? So, um, so I was looking for the opportunity. Beyond calls me up, leaves me this crazy message, and I'm like, 99 times out of 100, you know, I'm going to have someone else How to make back. It. Or, Show them what I said. Tell them. Tell them your, your impersonation of me. So it was basically, it was like, B, hey, uh, Brian Brad, this is uh, this is Beyond, Artrell, McCullough, a.k.a. No Catch. I'm I'm on a YouTube channel. I got 40 million views, and, you know, I'm doing with stuff at home and stuff. And, you know, I saw your picture on the paper, you know, with these guys, and you're doing things, and I'm doing things, and I'm thinking we can do things together. And uh, so so give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean. Like, what? Yeah, that's yeah. my high wit. That's my high wit, too. So, you know, after listening to it three more times, we can <laughs> figure out what's going on. Does that um, message still live somewhere? Yeah, yeah so he, we, he we got, got it. it. We, got it. we captured yeah. it. And uh, we have it on um, Beyond's YouTube page and some other stuff. Yeah. Um, but, so, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to call this guy. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to call him and we'll have breakfast with this guy. And we started building a relationship, and and what what the first thing that happened for both of us is on on paper, we were so much alike. I've got four felonies. I've got four felonies. Yeah, he's I'm a he's recovering, a recovering. Go ahead. I'm a recovering drug addict. I'm a reformed drug dealer. Yeah, we're both in our forties. Uh, you know, although not we yet, look like, but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> although we look like we're in our twenties. Yeah, I agree with that one. I agree with that one. Both have teenage children. Both grew up in the same hometown. You know, went to high school right across town from each other. So a, a lot alike. You know, um, I'm I'm white. He's black. He's got dreads. I got short hair. Um, but we had so many similarities, but the biggest difference, the big gaping difference was, was he was same homeless. Kind of yeah, he's homeless, and I'm the executive director of a homeless ministry. Mm. And, and, and truly, as I thought about it more and more, it was the people that God had put in my life that made the difference. People that had come into Beyond's life tried to capitalize on his talents. You know, his singing, take advantage of me, take manipulate advantage, me. You know, for misuse for me because it's all right to be used. I tell people all the time, it's all right to use me, just don't misuse yeah, me. Yeah. You know, because if you can't be used, then you're useless. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a good point. That's where the K and the W come in, knowledge and wisdom, right there. How about it? Right? Now you get <laughs> so. Um, get but God, I did not. Um, I'm not a self-made man. I didn't grab myself up by my bootstraps. You know, God sent so many people in my right. life. Sunday school teachers, pastors, you know, friends, guys in Bible study, you know, that helped me get to where I, uh, where I am today. Right. So I said, um, so the idea was, all right, Beyond, I want you to be my guide into the homeless world. And, and us go homeless for a week, me get a true perception of homelessness, and then through your YouTube platform, let's share. Bring awareness what, to Bring it. awareness, what I learned to everyone, so it's not just for me. Like it's for everyone. Idea. Yeah. Well, unless, until I told my wife, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I told her in stages. You know, we were like doing the family calendar, and she's like, "Hey, we got this in March," and I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna be out of town in Augusta this week with work," and then like two weeks later, she's like, "So, what are you doing in Augusta for?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm doing this homeless project," and then. Eventually, legit. yeah. Eventually, <laughs> I, then then I'm like packing a lighter and a knife and a, and a water bottle, you know. And she's like, "What's that?" And I'm like, "Well, this is my backpack for my homeless experience." Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but she was very supportive, fearful. After I agreed yeah. to go, you know, yeah. she wanted to make wanted to make sure that yeah, well, I was going to be on board. That's yeah, right. That's yeah, right. some street yeah. knowledge and. Um, Beyond came over to the house and we had dinner and we we went to the movies and I met his family and we just we, built we just got to know each other. The deal was he would he would we would get to know each other on a, on a, you know on a friend get to know each other as friends, and then he said that um, he didn't feel comfortable because all I really wanted to do was just get with them and see what we could do to help each other raise awareness to homelessness. You know what I'm saying? Not so much to help me, yeah. but um, he said he didn't feel comfortable with me helping him do anything with homelessness when my personal situation right now is still homeless uh -huh. and he wanted to try to help me in that way okay. you know like open right. up his resources Fair to enough. me right. yeah. for me to help him and so I was like that's cool and and you know from in the beginning of it all I didn't never expect things to transpire the way that they did but 
a lot of stuff has, you know, transpired, man. And I just want to continue doing it because he'll let you know in the beginning, you know, it's kind of iffy for me because the devil is busy now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't ever, I don't, as long as I've been doing what I was doing, I never had an offer come to me like the one that came after I agreed to go homeless with him for a week. An offer came to me. I had an opportunity to make about $14,000 within like two weeks. So it was a, do that. Do what I said, told Brian already that I would do for free or go and make this $14,000 and I really needed it. So I chose to do what I did with Brian for purpose. And Brian told me, he said, man, you know, if you go make that money, it's all right. You know, I'm not going to feel no kind of way, man, because I understand. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you back from money, sure. you know, and income and, 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 uh, and an opportunity, you know, yeah, absolutely. Cause it was, it was a very big opportunity. I'll keep it hush on the air as what it was, but it was the very big, one of the biggest opportunities I had since I was home. So I turned it down just to finish this up with Brian because I was already locked in, but I'm glad I did in the end. You know, I didn't see all of what was going to transpire on the other end, but looking back on it now, it was very much worth uh, the decision that I made. And, uh, and God is setting us on a real big, bright path, man. It's just taking on a life of his own. Well, that path has a name, at least for now, the Unsheltered Experience is what you guys are Unsheltered with no cash experience. The unsheltered with no cash experience. And so you have this plan to go live homeless for a week. Right. In a city that, that I wasn't familiar with. That's right. And so we're not like, you're like calling up your buddies. You're like. You can't, ain't no, nobody. Right. right, right, right. <laughs> Unfamiliar territory. I couldn't do it here. You know, I wanted the experience to be genuine. You know, there's no sense in doing it if it's not going to be genuine. Well, so, let's talk about that for a minute because you, you were telling me a little bit about this beforehand. What, what was driving you, um, and what were you hoping specifically to learn as the director of a homeless shelter? Like there was some, something in you that was like, I gotta have some knowledge. You know? Specifically, I couldn't understand what, what was the barrier for coming to the shelter? Why did it take it being 15 degrees for three days to bring the people in, you know what I mean? Because you you know there's a lot of homeless people in this area. Right, they oh, don't yeah, come right. And take advantage. And they of don't come for yeah. whatever reason, and and they don't they don't tell you what they're sitting. They're very um, reluctant to tell you their situation, you know. And, and you didn't know why. Yeah, and didn't know why. Right. Yeah. So you know, at House of Hope, we do a, a great job once someone comes beyond our doors, you know, into our facility. We got great facility, great staff, great programs. But we weren't doing a good job at outreach. It's like we didn't know how to meet people where they were, you know. Like when Beyond, I met Beyond, I'm like, hey, listen, Beyond, you know, I got the men's home, I got the emergency shelter. At any time, you know, you need a place to stay, whatever, we can put you in those programs, you know. But helping someone where they are is different. And, and then building a comfort level for them to come in shelter. So, so that was the big thing is is what's the inhibition? And, and also like, we had men come in to our, our long-term program and we're like, we're gonna give you food, shelter, clothing, but on top of that, we're gonna give you job training, we're gonna help you save money, we're gonna put you on your, back on your feet again, you know, we're gonna give you Christian discipleship and mentorship, and when you leave here in nine to 12 months, you're gonna have money and savings and you're gonna have a job and you're gonna have a place and, and, and here was the catchphrase. And you're gonna, we're gonna return you to society, <laughs> and and then there'd be this look, and they'd be like, okay, well I gotta think about that, and I'm like, what in Why the world? Why would they just flock? Like, right. 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 What right. in the world is to think about? Huh? There was something to think about. I just wanted to know, what would there be to think about? You know, why aren't you coming unless it's cold, and and when it's offered to you, when you come in and it's offered to you. What's the hesitation? And so so you we, thought you could go out on the street and learn that? Well, I thought that, you know, I, I knew within a week that I couldn't learn everything, yeah, but, yeah. but I could. But he'd have a better, better perspective. Right. Right. Especially I, I geared him up to it. He didn't yeah, think yeah, this. Yeah. This wasn't like he had a yeah. bright idea. Right. We was juggling, the, you know, little questions back and forth to each other. He asking me stuff about homelessness because he never experienced it. And then one day I just told him, I was like, man, you never really going to understand it. Even me, yeah. right? I'm not just this homeless advocate that just woke up one day one in the morning to help the homeless, right? It didn't happen like that. It happened because I went through it. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, like I, what, I didn't know what to do. And so the best way for me to explain to him that there's no way for him to really understand it either. And 
it, let's see, go through it. What's up? I just told him, like, man, you got to kind of like, if you go through it, you'll get a better understanding. So by me telling him that, he went home and went to thinking and thinking, and then he came up with divine idea that, okay, well, maybe if I go homeless for a week, I can get And do specific things. Yeah. Not, so the, the week was one thing. Oh, I'd seen where men's Bible studies and stuff, they do a weekend thing that, you know, basically they, they get their sleeping bag, their wife would pack them, you know, some Vienna sausages and crackers and some bottled water, and, and they go sleep under a bridge beside the river, roast s'mores for the weekend, and, they, and they'd be homeless. You know, and, and that's like camping. You know yeah, that's I mean? camping. That's yeah, not home. I, I didn't want to go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to camp. You know, for the weekend, sleeping on a cardboard box. You know, I wanted to know. So what I decided was I was going to check into a homeless shelter. I'd never checked into a homeless shelter to see what it felt like to go through the process, to give up your freedom, your liberty. You know, uh, eat at a food bank, panhandle, walk into a church homeless. Um, you know, so it wasn't us going somewhere for a week and just setting up a tent and kind of hanging out. No, we we were going we had to figure it out uh, from the place. time they drop us off on the highway. Right, it's we like didn't know nothing. About where to nothing. go? Where to hide? With no friends, nobody's yard. And shit. We didn't know where to go. Where downtown was? Nothing. Yeah, you weren't familiar with Augusta either. Right. No. So. I think he know more about Augusta than I do. He know a little better. And I've gone by it, but basically, we we had a film crew. Um, the Augusta Film um, Organization was working with a local film crew because we wanted to capture as much as we could. Yeah, sure. um, and so, because there was only so much stuff we could capture with iPhones, because people won't interact with you if they know they're being video. Uh, so yeah, we, yeah. so they were kind of in the shadows, kind of recording this. Well. It was raining, it was 42 degrees, and they said, okay, get out of the car and walk about, uh, they said like two miles that way. And it ended up being six, six miles. Six miles that way. You know, they six miles, so up. they kind of pointed us, they didn't tell us that we were going to downtown Augusta, they just said, walk that way, you know, and, and you'll find a spot, you know, you'll find a, a place to go. And so we walked right past Augusta National in the rain, 40, took us about six hours, you know. I got a golf ball. He got a golf ball from Augusta <laughs> National. And, um, you know, one of my concerns was I'd grown out a beard and I had, you know, I'd bought some old um, clothes or, or gotten some old clothes. Um, I, I was going to look homeless, but how long was it going to take me to feel homeless? Um, well, That's what he was thinking. Yeah, yeah. A six mile walk in the rain, 42 degrees. He got there, there real uh, fast. You get there real quick. You're <laughs> dirty, you're wet, you know, the whole nine yard, you're hungry. So, um, so that yeah, was it. Game game on. We got dropped off the interstate and, and we started our from the highway. The game was on. That's what I'm trying to tell. Walked you. off the bypass. So, Dion, tell me a little bit about your perspective at this point because you've been there. How did you real tough to go back into it on purpose? Man, I'm gonna tell you something. I, the thing that kept me going though is the purpose. Yeah. You know, I knew that it was very purpose filled. I knew that Brian needed this. So I went in optimistic, and but I'm glad I did because I needed it, man. I'm telling you, that week was worse than what I've ever experienced. Okay. But you learned something, too. Yeah, I learned a lot, a lot. Like, I, I knew some stuff, and then see, with me, with homelessness and, and even raising awareness to it, what even made me come up with the idea to raise awareness is because I know that a lot of people's perception is messed up when it comes to it. Even mine is. Even as I've been going through homelessness, my perception was messed up. So I'm like, wow, if we could just get that understood, get the people to understand it's just your perception, right? and th that will help the homeless a lot. So that's really why I came up with the idea to do it. So let's talk about that then. What is the purpose? What, when you say help the homeless, what, what are we trying to do here? So before I went, if you'd have asked me three months ago, Brian, how do I help homeless people? If I see a homeless person, what do I need to do? I would say, send them our way. You know, yeah. There's nothing. That's what we do. That's Just what you do. Hey, wash your hands off. Get and have, yeah. have our address, have our information, you know, tell them how to get to the shelter. Send them to me. That, send them to me and, and I'll take care of it, you know. Um, but what we what we learned is that that is what society has, has done and I was per perpetrating and, and, prop and that propaganda yeah. um, because we've decided as a society that homelessness is the problem of the of the city manager and the mayor and the police chief and the and the nonprofits and 
and the government and the local government, government yeah. you yeah. know, mm-hmm. y'all handle homelessness. There's nothing that I, as an individual, can do. Because I can't give them a home. I can't give them a job. I can't give them a car. Right. I ain't what can I do? Maybe the city or state can. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you do it. And, and yeah. what I have determined is from a spiritual level, from, you know, Christian, Christian level, and from a societal level, that um, there is some truth in that, but that's far from the truth. As individuals, um, we left there with a safe and practical way to help the homeless. And the homeless, it is society's problem. Yeah. And that's as, a big, large part of what we came back with. First of all, is that it's, it's society's problem. Okay. And then we came back with safe and practical ways that we can get involved to, to yeah. help this. Where everyone can get involved. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Well, let's talk. Let's bring the church into it um, here, because because my heart is for the local church, and I feel like that's a key to, to everything. Honestly. Absolutely, Amen. That's, Amen. The, that's the way Jesus set it up. And so, what are, what are you encountering as pushback from maybe church folk on this whole concept? And because you know, in the South, we worship comfort. A lot, you right. know? and so like it's, it's more comfortable if I can just send her to Brian. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. That's you know? right. So what if you you talk to anybody who's like mm, and just not sold on it? Or? Well, ironically, we we speak at churches. They have invited us to kind of tell you know our perspective afterwards, and they're very receptive and they're kind of getting involved. You know, they're, they're mm-hmm. kind of eager to want to you know make bad. Why do you think so, that is? Leon? Because perception. Before we came. Their perceptions were warped. Same thing that made me want to, like I said, raise awareness to it. Because even if I know that my perception is messed up and now I'm going through it, yeah. I begin to see that maybe that's why I can't get help. Because people don't understand. So now instead of me just trying to get people to understand for me, for one little old me, right. I need to get people to understand for homelessness sake. Right. And plus, it's <laughs> a, you got a homeless man and the executive director of a homeless organization. And so... That for us to give a message that that challenges their perceptions, I mean, if it was someone else, if if it was you and, and McCoy, uh, I think it would be different. You know what I mean? Because I was the person that was supposed to know. Yeah. You know, yeah, and right. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you that I didn't have it all right. You know, this is a guy who's lived it, and he's telling us that we didn't have it all right. Yeah. And um, and then the link to our relationship to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is that is the aha moment because so society has said the issue is the governments and the police and, and all that but I think that's propagated by the devil because the Bible says what you've done unto the least of these you've done as unto me the last thing that the devil wants us doing is ministering to Jesus our only opportunity to minister to Jesus when you when you approach a homeless person and you show them love, because you're giving something to someone who cannot give anything back to you, that That's is strange. that is right. agape love. That is you're you're doing something without thought of return. You know, a homeless person can't give you anything, but but the person coming from the exchange that did the giving, they're coming back with the biggest blessing filled and, and it filled, yeah. filled up. <laughs> but I think that the devil has has given us a world view of homelessness to say. All homeless people are dangerous. All homeless people are addicts. All homeless stay people, away from them. Don't yeah, help. Stay away from Don't them. Talk they have to diseases. Them. They have mental illness. You can't help them. Stay away from homeless people. There's nothing that you, Jane or John, can do for this homeless person. And that's the world view of homelessness. And I think that's the devil's view of homelessness because when we minister to these people, just by saying hello. How are you treating them with, with respect and giving, giving them, them some direction, some uh, advice, information? Yeah. But more important than that, giving them identity. That's because right. Because we walk past homeless people and and we put our head down and we speed up. We catch them in our peripheral. We put our head down. We speed up. We cut the corner. We walk around. We circle around. We roll up our windows. We lock our doors. Don't minister to homeless people. Well, biblically, you know what I'm saying? Don't minister to Jesus. When we see a homeless person, we should say, it's my opportunity to minister to Jesus. When a homeless person is coming to us, we should be like, thank you, Lord. I'm going to get an opportunity to minister to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The only opportunity. i got no other opportunity to do it. There's no way I can give to Jesus. 
God except works for the, the dynamics me, of people. Except for to visit me when I was in prison. Except for to clothe me when I was, you know, unclothed. Except for to feed, feed me, me when I was, you on. know. This is our only opportunity, and the devil does not want us to do that. Mm. The devil wants to dehumanize people. Dehumanize. Invisible. Jesus wants to say no. All Hell, of us. Can we hear for you? And guess who he's doing it for? He's doing it just as much for you. He's doing it for you yeah, just right. as much as for them. Like I said, my friend um, in Arizona gave somebody a bottle of water and a food bar, and he's like, writes me this two paragraph Facebook post about, man, Brian, I did it, and blah, 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 and I talked to this guy and had this conversation, and I'm like, the homeless guy got a bottle of water and a breakfast bar. <laughs> this guy got blessed. Yeah. You know what I mean? He got blessed. And where does blessing come from? It comes from the Lord. And what we've noticed by going out there for that week is that homeless people got that figured out more than people in regular society. Like, one thing we notice is that they don't have uh, a racial issue. They don't have prejudice in this going on. Wow. We saw all walks. I was of always in the minority. Always the minority. Yeah. Yeah. No I'm prejudice. Talking. I'm talking about, we saw all what we saw. I'm talking about African, black, Af African American. We saw uh, Indian. We saw P Pakistani. We saw white. We saw, I'm talking about, you name it. In, they just all help each other. That's interesting. There's it's something right. there, you know? You and see when what I'm saying? When a person gives you something, <laughs> um, they're giving you all they have to give. It's not a barter. It's not a, I give you this and you give me this back. I give you because you need it, and I know you need it. Wow. You saw that? You saw that happen, saw that happen a lot. Yeah, that, well, that was the biggest soap. takeaway. Okay, this guy had a, a can of chicken and three bars of soap. We was giving him information about where we were going to eat, where we had found out yesterday where to go eat from. So we told him, yeah, man, we're going over here to get us something to eat. And then he told us about um, a, a place where we can go get some snacks from, but this is we've never been there. He was like, so yeah, after we eat. They got a place around the corner around there where y'all can get a bag from. You know, I don't know if y'all want that or not. I said, hey, man, you got you some chicken there. You're doing good. A can of chicken and three bars of soap. He was like, yeah, man. He was like, do you want a bar of soap? So I was like, yeah, I take the soap. I took it. And he asked Brian, he said, you want a bar of soap? Brian was like, nah, I'm good, man. That's all right. And uh, from that day, he wrote Brian off because he felt like Brian didn't reciprocate the energy out there where he knew right. something wasn't right with that. Right, right. You see what and I'm saying? So I'm asking beyond I'm like, what's up? I mean the guy just like shut down. He not talking to me as anymore. soon as you said no. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, you know, Dion, what 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 you guess for this guy? He's like, You didn't take the soap, man. The guy all the piece of soap and you didn't take the soap and I'm like, Well I didn't know when we we're gonna have a shower. I'm not wanting to take from him, he's going to ask me for a cigarette, or I don't know why I didn't take something. And, and you see like, how his perception was? His perception was that. But he was like, no, was like, man, he, he just wanted, you didn't let him bless you. He And he got blessed by that. And, wow. and you robbed him of his blessing. And the irony of it, when he gave me this, as I took the soap, me and him began to exchange a lot of oh, information. Right. He got oh, yeah. open with me. I met him again when we went to check in at the... Um, at the shelter, he came to check in there too. I gave him my bag because I got blessed with a bag from somebody else. I gave him my old bag, and we just kept exchanging. Every time Brian came around, he just went away. Literally, we got it on video. <laughs> Beyond sitting there talking to him, and I'm he's standing up talking to him, and I'm sitting down charging my phone at this uh, church. This they had an outdoor outlet, you know. So I'm sitting there and. And I'm just chilling out, and I'm talking, and, and he's carrying on conversation. So I'm like, all right. But Brian know. is down. Yeah, I'm sitting down. You know, I'm about five feet away, so I'm like in the corner. So I'm like, so all right, well, I'm going to get up. Like this I'm going to get up. They've been talking for like five or six minutes. I get up. I take two steps. Gone. Gone. I went to go where he was at, and Brian right. came where I was at. And he walked off from Brian as if, like, I ain't trying to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Something's amiss with this guy. All right, well, let's, let's look forward a minute. Where is all this heading? Like, what, what's the solution? And I know there's not one that you can like put your finger on necessarily, but it sounds like if we're raising awareness, we get some perception difference. What, what's going to happen? What, where are we headed? It's going to cause others. Once your perception, once you got your perception right, when it comes to being aware to homelessness, you have no choice but to find your place to see where you can get involved at, if any. I don't care whether whatever it is. It could just be. You just might be somebody that just give them advice. You might say, hey, man, the shelter's 
that one on such and such. That's the best I can do. Or you might be somebody that can give them a couple of dollars. Or you might be somebody who can put some packages in the back of the truck to give many of them some. But you will find your place to safely and practically get involved. All right. Number one is that you, as an individual, have a relation, have a responsibility for homelessness. That's right. You, as a Christian, even I mean, more so. Right. Even Absolutely. more so. So, so one is. You can't just pass people on the street without um, without any kind of impact on your consciousness. You know, we, we want to take that away. I am of the sinners. I am the chief of these because I could check off the box. Hey, I'm the executive director of a homeless shelter. 60 people stay in fed. I could drive home, see a homeless person, be at Walmart, you know, walk in, homeless person come up to me, and I check the box, you know. Guilt, guilt free I do my part you know so I would do the same thing head down you know spin around go go past <laughs> but now um, if a homeless person approaches you or if you see someone and you have the time and ability it is your responsibility it's our responsibility as a society and and we got some simple takeaways one get in the game just you know just be active um, like like Beyond was saying, once your conscience is steered, seared and your perception is corrected, then you have a responsibility to get involved, to get involved in, in some right. way. The next thing is is meet people where they are. The same place that Jesus met you. Jesus met me on my hands and knees looking for crack cocaine out of the floor mat of my vehicle. That's where Jesus met me. So don't expect to see a homeless person that's not smoking or drinking or, or laying under a shade tree. What do you expect them to be doing? You know what I mean? Um, meet them where they are and then ask them what they need. If you can help them, help them. If you can't, you can't. You know, um, I have four daughters at home. Every day one of them asks me for a couple of dollars. It's not some big you know, event. I'm, scary I'm not scared. <laughs> I, I don't wake up petrified that someone's going to ask me for two dollars. Yet I see a homeless person and I'm like, I'm not going to engage with them. They're going to ask me for money. So I'm not going to engage with them. Because all they're going to do is ask me for money. Well, they can ask you for money. And if you don't have money, don't give them money. But then ask them what they need. That's they may right. need ask direction. They need. When right. we walked six miles in the rain, if someone would have told us where the shelter was. You know, when the police kicked us out of our camp, if they would have just told us where the shelter was or, or where we needed to go or what we needed to do, Absolutely. that would have meant a lot. Then it's, ask yourself why. And then ask yourself why. You know, there's a reason that if you see a teenager homeless, if you see an elderly person homeless, if you see or sit a, a, a young, in the rain or right. just a strange situation, somebody with all of their bags, and you're like, why? And you see, you know, a young, able bodied person that's homeless, ask yourself why. There's a reason. They could have been physically abused, they could have been molested, they could have been, they could have mental illness. Um, they could have lost their mother and father in an accident, you know, and just lost not everybody. <laughs> you don't know. I have. Um, I just got this portrait from this lady. It's called Walking Paul, and it's this homeless guy from Myrtle Beach. And his story is he was a, a construction worker, very successful at the beach. And his father passed away in Tennessee, um, and then he just he just gave everything up. Now. I, I don't think it's because his father died. I think it's because of what died with his father. Was he building this business for his father to be proud of him? Was he building this business in hopes that his father would move to the beach and live with him? Whatever he was doing when his dad died, that opportunity was dead, was, was dead too. And he just, he just quit. So this guy, he's able and everything. He's homeless for a reason. Just ask yourself why and then and take the soap. That's Whatever right, God's it. offering you, take it and then give it to someone else. And if, if someone offers you something, receive that blessing and pass it along. That's right. Be a conduit for the blessings. And why we say get in the game from the top of it is because it's like this, like I said, when you go to church on Sunday, I look at church as like practice for getting it right, right? So you go to church. You got your coach there, which is your preacher, and y'all put in there, y'all read, and y'all get each other right, and y'all get all energetic with all the light, right? Now, when do you go and get in the game? You can't just practice all the time, right? You can't practice all the time. <laughs> yeah, you go there, and, and he says, be doers of the word and hearers only. Love that neighbor as thyself. 
you know, what you've done to Lisa, all your you've done all all your to me, you know, and, and then we walk out of the door, you know, and, and drive past the first homeless person we see. Y'all are rocking the boat here. You know that, right? You, you're it's shaking out boat. with people. Yeah. Yeah. It's Rock, already rocking our boat. boat. And, and, and what we realize is, I'm going to tell you something. Fear is false evidence appearing real. See, a lot of people don't help the homeless for fear a lot of times, right? And it's because of false evidence appearing real. Even with us, me and him, we have some false evidence appearing real. But now, on the other side of it, we see how beautiful it is. We see the eyes that are open. Even when we were out there, man, a lot of people walked past us and didn't do things. And yeah, that was down and gloomy and negative. But the few little things that were did by people who were, I would say, God's people, who were kind people, angel-like, man, they were like overwhelming. Like, I, I went to the Daughtry concert, man. Who who pays for a homeless man to go sit front row, front row at a Daughtry concert? Who lets strangers stay in their uh, abandoned warehouse with all type of, you know, valuable stuff? And there wasn't no heat. It wasn't, no, you know, it was lights. It wasn't nothing very, very comfortable for us. But we could have tried something, yeah. you know, and they just opened it up to us. And it's like, wow. Once it showed me that if we could help the mass majority of the people with their perception, they'll do the rest. Right. And what's that going to do for a homeless person? Well, I'll tell you what, if if I'm homeless for, I was homeless for a week, and a, a man let us stay in his warehouse, and a man gave beyond a ticket to a concert. Outside of that, out of hundreds of people, nobody helped me. Nobody, I, I panhandled, I didn't get a dime. I got no assistance from the general public on the streets. Within the shelters, I got help, but on the streets, but if I was homeless for a week and I had 10 people engage me and express love to me and say, hey, how can I help you? My faith in society and, and my, my faith that, hey, there's people out there I can that do can this. help me, that might, have, that might be just the thing that they need to check into a shelter, to, to check into a program, to give life a chance one more time because it's faith in society that they have to get. You That's know, right. And, and faith in God that they have to get. You know, but they've lost faith in people probably on some right. fundamental oh, yeah. level. And so if an actual person comes up, shows them love for no reason, right. it changes the course of their life. Right. And I never said this to Brian, but I see this a lot. I don't be wanting to like try to write the future, but hey, they say speak it and it comes to fruition. My thing is we help them on the low end right now with people's perceptions, trying to get everybody involved, right? Because you said it's all of our issue and we all can do something about it. But here's what I see. If we can get everybody's perceptions tweaked and sharpened, one person can fix it, can do major things. Like look at it like this, a millionaire somewhere, right? The reason why he's not doing the one thing he possibly could do like Get, renovate this big building over here and provide a place for a lot of homeless people. One millionaire person can do plenty of things like that if his perception saw what's needed. Right. If he had a couple of friends of his say, I listened to this message, I got this vision, uh, I bought this family, you know, a meal, I put this, this woman into a hotel and this is how I felt, he'd be thinking, you did all of that. Man, yeah. You felt all that from doing that? <laughs> well, what could I do? Yeah, you, you know? see what I'm saying? And that's just one. Now imagine about 10 or 20 or 100. We got a lot of successful people in the world that are sitting back. And I don't think they just don't want to help with the homeless. They're just like you, me and Brian. Like we they were don't saying, think they, can. they don't understand how they could. Uh -huh. It's like, why? Or they might be fearful. I'm not going to help them. I don't know what. Ah. Just help with their perception, and they can do the rest. And I well, think let's that. talk about that for a second, because I think the one last question I have is, average Joe, not the millionaire guy, 